this chocolate popsicle is way better than the last one I made. The link below if you want to see that. Hi everyone, it's Ashley. Today we are chatting about toy rotation. Now, I'm sure many of you are following some sort of rendition of this at home, which is great. For those who aren't, we will be going over what exactly toy rotation is, why it's so beneficial for your children, what kind of toys to incorporate, and when to actually make that toy rotation. So, let's get into it. Okay, so what exactly is toy rotation? Toy rotation is essentially rotating your child's toys periodically from the storage or wherever you can stash your child's toys to your child's playroom. This means instead of having your child's entire toy collection out at their disposal 24 seven, you would put sections of it away and reintroduce it at a later time. So if your child has all their toys out all the time, I strongly recommend to cut their toy collection in half, keep some of it in a safe place, and rotate it periodically from time to time. Why is this so important? Toy rotation maintains the novelty in your child's existing toys and encourages more creativity in your child's play. Kind of like a less is more concept. Your child will resort to using their toys in a more creative way if that's all they have around to play with. Toy rotation also extends the longevity of your little one's toys. Have you ever had something for so long that you just get bored of it and don't want to use it anymore? Not including your husband or wife. This same concept applies to your children's toys. By rotating them, you're giving your child a chance to miss or even forget the toy. And once you reintroduce the toy to your child, it becomes this new engaging thing that they haven't seen in a while. It can also potentially save you money in case your child is wanting to buy a new toy at the store. You can tell them that you have a surprise toy at home and whip that toy out that's been hiding in the storage since forever. Did you know toy rotation can also be directly linked to your child's behavior? Having all those toys all out at once can easily create overwhelming emotions. What to pick first? Where to go next? Having less toys available will eliminate that overwhelming feeling and allow your child to become fully engaged with their toys without being overstimulated or frustrated. Let's talk about mummies and daddies too. Do you ever feel stressed or anxious from all the clutter? If you're OCD like me, following the minimalistic approach will allow you to control the chaos and keep things neat and organized. It'll also give more space for your child to play. Okay, so how often should you be rotating your toys? This will depend on your child and how engaged they are in the toys that are out. I will often tell parents at tours at the center that the children will tell us in their own ways when they're bored and sick of the toys. If you notice your child is throwing the toys or using them in impractical ways, like trying to break the toy or even hiding it, these can all be telltale signs that they're ready for a change. You can jump ahead of this process and rotate the toys once a week or twice a week. That's usually a good rule of thumb, but it really does depend on how engaged your child is with the toys. At the center, not only do we interchange the toys periodically, but we also like to swap out materials if we're implementing different themes or seasons for programming. So in that case, we'll make room for these new materials and take out the toys that the children are bored of or maybe need a bit of a break from. Here are some examples of what you can use throughout your toy rotation. So I have some books for language and literacy, some dress up materials, great to spark your children's imagination, building toys, things that your child can build and manipulate with, animals, people, or figurines. This will help with pretend play, some more manipulation, open-ended materials that can be used for multi-purposes. Instruments are always a great item to use for things like music, keeping a beat, maintaining a rhythm. Play food is perfect for role playing and self-regulation. Cognitive toys that can help build your child's skills. 
These are all just examples, of course. Um, down in the description below, I'll leave more ideas of what toys to consider during toy rotation. So that's pretty much the rundown of toy rotation. I hope this motivates you to try it at home if you're not doing it already. If you have any other topics you'd like to talk about or you want me to go over, please comment down below or message me directly. I'm happy to chat about it. Until next time, take care and see you soon.